All right, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Bashim Shai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bashim Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, especially in the times we're in. So I'm not sure of the title I'm going to put on this video, but I want to react to the, this video that was put up by um, Elder Karataza of GMS Baltimore. This is his channel here, Biblical Defenders. Uh, the name of the video is entitled, Be Skilled in Your Calling. No, this is not GMS behavior. And of course, he's reacting to a video uh, that was put up by this group here. Anyway, um, let's just jump right into it. Five minutes to hear the words of the Lord. Good, bro. Two minutes, bro. Wait, too, good, too good to hear the words of the Lord. Is that good, brother? No, I heard What word you heard, sister? Come on now. I, hey, the Lord said, "Thou shalt not lie, man." <laughs> Our people love making stuff up, man. Hey, brother. Nice car. You gotta, you gotta separate from your enemy, though, brother. You're an Israelite. You got to separate from your enemies, man. Your enemy is a so-called white woman, brother. She might have accused you of whistling. Hey, she might have accused you of whistling back then, man. Yeah, you're going you to kill your brother for the white woman, right? Yeah, you will. You're going to kill your brother for the white woman? Hey brother, now you holding up traffic. That's my wife, 21 years. We got three kids. Hey brother, do you believe in the Bible? Watch how you talk. You believe in the Bible? Yeah, my wife. Hey, you believe in the Bible? Right now, I don't care about none of that. Hey, you know the Lord. I don't care about none of that. The Lord said we got enemies, brother. I don't care about none of that. You know the Lord said we got enemies, brother. Hey, watch how you just you 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 out here begging for somebody. You got it, brother. You got it. I swear. Hey brother, you out here for the Lord, bro. You inviting the devil. You don't know the Lord, brother. That's why you saying that. You inviting the devil. All right, brother. I promise you that. All right, brother. You best with the right one, boy. You better watch how you talk about my wife. All right, brother. I'm telling you right now. All right, brother. You talk all the white people you want to, but that's my wife, bro. And I will get out that car and I will do what I gotta do. I don't care how many y'all. Out here. Brother, brother, I'm gonna let you know. Brother, we not we not dealing with that. Brother. Bro, I don't give a we, we dealing with that. Well, I take it there. I swear I will. Just keep it pushing, brother. It ain't hey, even man. that serious, bro. I don't want me to do it, brother. You're right, but I don't, brother. I'll pray some more side game. You right, brother. You don't want these right, problems. Watch your mouth. Hey, brothers, get back to the It ain't no line, sense in everybody laying down out here for nothing. You're That's right, what I'm baby. trying to tell you, bro. You're right. It ain't even worth it. Is your life worth talking shit to me while I drive by? Hey, look, brother. We not out here. Uh, well, that's what I'm on. So right. I'm gonna let you know. Watch how you talk to me and my wife, bro. Right. I, I, I don't give a fuck who around. I don't care the police. None of that. If you disrespect me and mine, I will die for it. Out here in front of everybody. Right goddamn now today. I promise you, nigga. Watch how you talk about me and my wife when I pass by. Don't never in your life talk to me like that. I swear on everything I love. Do what you gotta do. We don't wanna do nothing. We don't wanna do nothing. Peace I will, goddamn. I'm gonna let you know Peace right out, now. Brother. Peace out, brother. Enjoy the Hover Fest. Right to the work, man. Bring that up. Go back to that. Go yeah, back to that. Kill your ass. Bring it up. Brother, don't know. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. I don't know. Give me something, man. Give me, uh... Bring it out! Brother. Enjoy the Hover Fest, man. Right to the word, man. Bring that up. Go back to that. Go yeah, back to that. Yeah, Keo was so funny. Bring it up. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. I don't know. Give me something. <laughs> Kept saying, bring it out, bring it out. Yeah, well, my opinion is this. There was a lot of mistakes that was made on behalf of the guy uh, teaching or, you know, trying to teach. 
You know, first of all, he uh, went that so-called white woman route. Now, time and time again, we have told you this is not a color thing. This is a spiritual thing. You can't, you know, gone are the days when you see a so-called white person and you just, uh, you know, you just start attacking them because of the color of their skin, the way that they look. Time and time again, we've taught that you're going to have Israelites looking like so-called white people, whether it be the man or the woman, okay? So just because you see a so-called black man with a so-called white woman, you know, doesn't give you, doesn't give you a, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? The, go, the green light or the go-ahead to attack the man. Okay, and that's why that so-called black man, that's why he got so offended and upset. Okay? So, those of you who haven't seen that video, that's a lesson to you. And you notice right towards the end, the spirit, <laughs> the spirit was kind of sucked out of that guy, you know? Because he was not walking in the spirit okay as a matter of fact let's get that scripture if you're walking in the spirit you should know that you can't judge a person by the outward appearance you got to judge by the spirit okay this is why the scriptures say walk ye in the spirit you know a lot of these guys they see what we do you know begin with elder pastor and down you know or these other israelite groups and a lot of these guys, they're attracted by that, you know, and they think it's easy that you can just go on the street and start teaching uh, the word. But as you clearly just saw, the Holy Spirit has to work with you. The Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahshua has to work with you for you to be teaching the right way, okay? And what you just saw, that was not a demonstration of teaching the right way. When we're out there teaching, this is not a personal attack. When we're out there teaching, we have to walk in the spirit and stay in the spirit. Let's get that scripture. And I just gave you an example of walking in the spirit. Walk in. Remember, this thing of ours is spiritual, not carnal. Walk in the spirit. it is right here Galatians the fifth chapter the 16th verse it says this I say then these are the words of the Apostle Paul speaking to the Israelites in Galatia it says this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh now an example of walking in the spirit is you should know that you're gonna have Israelites looking like the nations they what where they were scattered the men or the women so you're going to have Israelite women looking like the so-called white woman. How do you know that the woman that was with that man was an Israelite woman? You don't know. You just immediately zeroed in on the way she looked, her outward appearance. Let's get the book of 1 Samuel 16 and 7. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. What that guy proved was he was a straight-ahead novice. Okay? And towards the end, he ended up looking silly. He ended up looking stupid. The book of 1 Samuel 16 and 7, it says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, meaning his, his face, or his outward appearance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Now here's the point. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. See? So, that example you just saw, that guy was not walking in the spirit. He was not thinking spiritually. He was thinking as a natural man. Now, the scriptures speak about a natural man, a carnal man. The, the scriptures say a carnal man is, an, is enmity with the Heavenly Father. That's why eventually the spirit left him. You heard when he said, uh, just give me anything. Give me, his, his mind was all jumbled up. His focus was gone, okay? So that's an example to you, especially you young brothers, right? That's why it's so important to have the correct teachers, the right kind of examples. There's a scripture where it says we lead by example. You got to have the right kind of example. 
And we here, I hate to sound like a goddamn commercial, but beginning with Apostle Tall and Down, we show you the right example. What he did, we used to do that back in the 90s. This is before we got a greater understanding of this knowledge, this truth. There's a scripture where it says, grow in grace and knowledge of the Heavenly Father. This truth is always growing. Okay, we don't teach the same way we used to say 10 years ago. Why? Because this thing of ours constantly grows. It never stays stagnant. Did not, how should I say that this thing of ours is living water? Living water keeps flowing, man. Living water is not stagnant. And you got to flow with it. You got to flow with the spirit. Okay? Yahweh Shai told Nicodemus, the spirit is like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from and you don't know where it's going. Now, if you're rolling in the spirit, you would know that you're going to have Israelites. This is if you're rolling in the spirit and, and uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is dealing with you and you have the knowledge, you have the truth. You have uh, a, a good understanding of the knowledge, the truth. You would know that you're going to have an Israelite looking like any nation where they were scattered. And you got to learn to read their spirit. Okay? And that guy simply didn't do that. All he did was look at... Uh, and then he's telling the dude... Um, you, basically, he's telling the dude that uh, uh, you're going off by having a so-called white woman as, as your, your partner. Right? <laughs> First of all, you don't know the dynamic between that man and his woman. And you notice the... the the uh, other guy, he was lucid. He was clear and lucid in, in, in his speech. He said, look, this has been my woman for 21 years. Who the hell are you to try to disrespect me in front of my woman? You know, Jake ain't going to take too kind of that. Okay? So what that guy did was, <laughs> my goodness, and like the, the brother, and I'm play some of uh, the comments that Karatazar made, which he made some good comments. You know, I was listening to this to that video he just did. I had just finished uh, doing my workout. I bought myself a, a, a decent bicycle. And I biked 20 miles today, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not bad for a 57 year old man. <laughs> yeah, man, 20, 20 miles. All right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I went on this trail and man, it was exhilarating, okay? And uh, right after, almost when I was done, I, I put Karatazar's video on and I almost couldn't wait to get home to do the video that I'm doing now. So hopefully you find it edifying and exhorting. But that is not the way <laughs> to teach the gospel, man. You got you to gotta, you gotta get on a higher level than that, man. This truth is, is uh, it can be very sophisticated. Okay, it can be simple on one hand, but it can be very sophisticated on the other hand. When I, what I mean by sophisticated is you have to learn discernment. That guy didn't show no discernment, the guy who, who, who was uh, teaching. He didn't show no discernment, right? And basically he showed himself to be a novice. Now, could he have been sincere? He could have been sincere. Then again, he could have been doing it, playing it up for the camera. You got guys that do that too. Either way, this thing of ours is not about that. The scriptures speak about being sincere and honest. Above all, the scripture says, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't go by the appearance, the outward appearance of someone. You have to go into their spirit. Okay? So, uh, getting back to 1 Samuel 16 and 7, it says, Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance. And that's what you saw with that guy. He was looking at the man's woman. Okay. First of all, that, that, that was not a good move. You don't speak about a man and his woman. Now, if the man were to come up to you and, and say to you, Hey, I heard that you guys don't like white people. You know, th this, is my, this is my wife or this is my woman. She's a white woman. What do you think about that? Then you would, the next move you would make, you would say, well, what, what is your woman's nationality? Is she Irish? Is she Italian? Is she? Then you would go into the history. Then you would say, as it is written, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Remember that, Proverbs 15 and 1. 
a soft answer turning for a wrath. That's what you want to do. You want to give soft answers. You don't want to excite. First of all, Jake is already, you have to know that Jake is already, um, the average Jake is very, what's the word I'm looking for? They're very, um, they learned that from their, their mothers. They're very emotional. It don't take much to get, especially they have, Jake has an innate hatred for his, for of someone who looks like him and no respect. You know where they learned that from? Their mother. They learned it from their mother. So with all that in your head, you got to approach the situation delicately. Okay, you don't want to excite, the, the guy's already excitable, all right? You don't want to excite him with, with uh, inflammatory words, okay? What that dude was saying to that, that Jake was inflammatory words, especially about his woman. That's his woman. Furthermore, he's in his car driving down the street. You ain't got nothing. What's wrong? <laughs> you ain't got nothing to say to that guy. That guy ain't trying to hear the word. He's in, he was in that fancy car with his so-called white woman. He was enjoying the life. All right? You was killing his vibe. <laughs> but that's one to grow on, man. That's one to grow on. That's one for you, you uh, Jake's out there. Even in GMS, you younger brothers and you other camps, that's one to grow on, okay? Anyway, going back to the scripture, for man looketh on the outward appearance. But here's the key. The Lord looketh on the heart, meaning the spirit. So we are to walk in the spirit at all times. This thing of ours, right, this knowledge, this truth, teaches us how to be spiritual, not carnal. How to be spiritual. Okay? Remember that. This thing of ours teaches you how to be spiritual, how to be subtile. I remember years ago, Elder Pastor used to bring the scripture out in his classes, and I think it applies right now. So I'm going to bring it out for you, especially for you younger brothers. This is the book of Proverbs, the first chapter. And we'll start the first verse. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And not just the Proverbs, the whole Bible. What is the purpose of this knowledge, this truth? Let's read about it. Okay, and this is for you young brothers. Never forget this. This is, the, this is the purpose of you being involved in this ministry. This is the purpose of this gospel for you. Okay, so listen good. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, uh, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, which you just saw there, that was not wisdom. That was not wise at all. That guy that who called himself teaching with the, with the glasses, that guy is lucky the other, the, that, that Jake wasn't, uh, didn't turn into gorilla mode on him because the, the other Jake sounded serious, okay? Because he was really offended at the way the, the guy came at him. That was totally uncalled for. That was a personal attack. You don't know the dynamic between that guy and his woman, okay? There's a scripture where it says, who knows the way between a man and his maid? That was not a good move, especially the guys in his car going down the street. What the hell's wrong with you? You ain't got nothing to say to a guy like that, okay? Furthermore, that's the thing, see, you Israelites, you think we're out there to save everybody. We're only looking for the elect, the potential members of the elect. The guy in his car with his so-called white woman didn't act like a potential member of the elect. Okay? He was just out there having a good time. Him and his so-called white woman in their nice fancy car. Okay? He was out there showing off. And you, with your, with your Bible talk, you were killing his vibe. <laughs> Okay? <laughs> anyway, let me keep reading, man. It says, To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment. And this knowledge, this truth, is not for everybody. When will you Jakes learn that? It is not for everybody. It's only for the elect. Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it. Have obtained what? The total understanding of this truth, the 100% truth. The election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded beginning with those that even claim they're in the truth, which in reality, a lot of them are blinded, like these Israelites that just can't get the understanding of the MOTB, 
the most important prophecy on the table right now, Revelation 13, 16. They just can't get it. They're not part of the elect. And like Elder Pastor Ben saying from day one, when they make this thing mandatory under the penalty of death, which they will do, a lot of these Israelites of these different groups, they're going to take that MOTB because they're, they're, they're gonna, they have no faith and they lack understanding, so they're going to give in because e Esau is going to put the big squeeze. Esau is going to put the big squeeze, all right, because really that's the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side putting the spirit on Esau to put the big squeeze. And that goes back to the book of Revelation, the third chapter, where it speaks about where the Lord said, I will bring the, um, how's he say it, the temptation? As a matter of fact, let's just get it because I'm not doing it justice. Basically, the time of temptation. Revelation, the third chapter, and the 10th verse, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What's the word of the Lord's patience? This knowledge, this truth. And let's remember, the word patience means to suffer. It's from the Latin, meaning to suffer. So it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. What's the hour of temptation? When Esau, at the behest of the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side, when Esau makes this thing mandatory, what thing? the, the uh, RFID chip, the electronic chip, which is the mark of the beast pursuant to Revelation 13, 16. Esau is going to make that thing mandatory. There's tons and tons of legislation passed to put that in place. Esau is going to create um, uh, chaos, different forms of chaos to justify why everyone should take that chip. Not to, uh, not to forget that... Um, that's part of the new world order. This is we're in. We've we've already been since 1933 the new world order, but even more so now, we're we're heading to the final touches of the new world order, and that's what's on the back of your dollar bill, which is the image of this beast, the new world order. That's why when you look at the image, you'll see the Latin words novos ordo seclorium annuit coeptis. He favors our enterprise with success. What is their enterprise? The New World Order. That's their form of getting, the, getting back their birthright. Esau getting back his birthright, which he lost to Jacob, our forefather Jacob. That's the New World Order. That's the image of the beast. And what is the mark? That chip. To quote the words of Terry Cook. And we're going to keep teaching this to the point of ad nauseum. It's already there, but we're going to just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it till they make this thing mandatory which they will do under the penalty of death, okay? So, quoting the words of Terry Cook, and I like the way he said it, the, new, the, the RFID chip, the electronic chip, is the elite mark of the New World Order. That's according to Terry Cook, okay? And you might say, well, who the hell is Terry Cook? Well, Google him, all right? Try to find a, a video called... Um, uh, um, uh, Millennium 2000 with Jordan Maxwell all right Anthony J. Hilda and like I said Terry Cook okay they're having a sit down discussion and they're going into the dynamics of the RFID chip now if that doesn't suffice you look up uh, what's his name look up uh, Aaron Russo one time Hollywood movie producer produced the movie Trading Places, Aaron Russo. Look him up. As a matter of fact, in YouTube, the search box, type in Aaron Russo, The Mark of the Beast. You should find a video, it's about eight minutes long, where Aaron Russo discussed the dynamics of that RFID chip. And he also talks about how he and Nick Rockefeller, who were friends, how Nick Rockefeller told him about the chip, that they want everyone chipped. And then he goes into the dynamics of the chip, how all your information will be on the chip. Your finances will be on the chip. As a matter of fact, the chip will be the new form of currency, which is a bounce off of the CBDC. You should know what the CBDC is all about. Central bank digital currency. And we've been teaching that, we've been teaching that for the longest. Even so, uh, IUIC has picked, finally picked up on it. And every now and then they'll go into it. 
but they still cl they still cling to that stupid breakdown of the MOTB being sin, which is a sin to take it. It's a violation of the Heavenly Father's law, which is sin, 1 John 3 and 4. But the mark itself is not sin. The mark itself is an actual device they want to put in, inside of you under the penalty of death. Okay? That's why the Apostle John saw men that were beheaded for not bowing to the image of the beast, which is the New World Order, and not taking its mark. Okay? That's why I say under the penalty of death. So, getting back to Revelation 3 and 10, all what I said to you is the hour of temptation. Esau will make this thing mandatory. So, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, all the world, the whole world. Remember, the chip is the elite mark of the new world order. It ain't just America or Great Britain or Canada. It's the whole world. The top banking families that rule the whole world, they want everyone in the whole world chipped. That is their ultimate goal. That is their ultimate goal, to have everyone chipped. And you'll notice different countries in the world, that's already a reality. In Sweden, it's a reality. In Singapore, it's a reality. They're just keeping it out of the news. Okay? There's certain countries in the world where the chip is the norm. Switzerland, Sweden are great examples. Well, that's what they want to bring here to the Americas, in particular, America itself, okay? They just have to create the right kind of crises or crisis, which I believe is going to be crises, which is a plural form of crisis, to bring this thing in like gangbusters. And they're going to have their New World Order armies to back it up, to enforce it, okay? And that is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, as the Bible speaks about in Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, beginning at the 7th verse. Okay? So that is your hour of temptation. I will also keep thee, the elect that is, from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So these Israelites that have not been well, well informed, because their teachers, their, their leaders have sold out, their leaders have not given them the 100% truth, the correct information, they are going to bug out and they're going to cave under pressure because they're not armed with this knowledge, this information, and they're going to take that chip. And most of all, they're not part of the elect anyway. Everyone who takes that chip, automatically they're not part of the elect. When Yahweh Shai comes, who's he going to gather? His elect, Matthew 24 and 30, okay? So there you go. So I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And we can see this thing crystal clear. Remember, as it is written, where there is no vision, the people have what? No hope. As a matter of fact, let's, let's uh, bring that scripture. There is no vision. And I'm going to go back to the original topic. But the Spirit had me segue into what I just said about this time of temptation because we're almost there and it's immensely important that you un you know and understand this okay here's the scripture right here proverbs 29 and 18 where there is no vision see so vision is important the ability to see into the future the prophets were also called seers s-e-e-r what's a seer a visionary so part of the gifts that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai gives us is the ability to see in the future, to become a visionary. See, that's the thing. There are many gifts in this ministry, man. Now, what you just saw in that video, that guy, he doesn't have the gift of discernment. It's not about just picking up a mic and standing out there and just <laughs> going on a personal tirade with everyone that walks by. Okay? Or trying to take this truth and shove it down everyone's everyone's throat just to get a reaction. And you film it, then you put it on YouTube, and all of a sudden now you got to follow it. Maybe that's what the guy was trying to do. I don't know. Okay? Or then maybe he was being sincere. Either way, 
he went about it totally the wrong way. Okay? And this is why it's so important to have the right kind of instructors to instruct you concerning this ministry, concerning this truth. So going back to scripture, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So being a visionary is extremely important. So again, going back to Proverbs, the first chapter, let's finish read that and then we're going to go back to the video. So this is what this knowledge is supposed to do for us that have been involved in this thing of ours. And like I said, years ago, Elder Pastor would always start his classes out with the scripture here that I'm reading to you. So I hope you are learning from it like I learned from it all those years ago when he used to bring the scripture out. It says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Now, here's the point that he used to read. This is the point that really resonated with me all those years ago when he used to read the scripture. I, 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 I didn't join his camp until what, 1991? I came in 1990. I didn't join his camp until almost a year later. 1991. So it had to be around 91, 92 that I was attending his classes, Elder Pastor's classes, and he would bring the scripture out. So we're, we're talking, we're going back to 1991, 1992. Some of you weren't even born yet. Okay? Anyway, uh, Proverbs 1 and 4, to give subtility to the simple. That's the ultimate goal, man. The scriptures say that we are supposed to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. What you just witnessed there, that was not an example of being wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. See, a serpent understands both sides. A serpent knows how to be subtile. A serpent knows when, when, when to strike and when to coil up. Okay? What you just witnessed there, that, that, that guy was a total novice. And that's why the scriptures speak about a novice. At least uh, as a novice, he's lifted up with pride. And what happens? He falls into the condemnation of the devil. Okay? It says to give subtility to the simple. That's us. When we first come into this truth, we had that simple look. We were just simple. Simple as all hell. I know I was. All right? Simple as all hell, man. But as you keep uh, growing in this truth, you become like a serpent in righteousness. Yahweh was a serpent in righteousness. You can be a serpent in righteousness, you, you know. You know when to strike and you know when to coil up. Okay? And <laughs> the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahshua got to be dealing with you to show you these things. Okay? And discernment is the key. Discernment. That's a gift, man. You young brothers never forget that. The ability to discern, to see things, see between the lines, read between the lines discernment okay not not just about putting on a garment and going out there calling the so-called white man the devil <laughs> it's a whole lot more than that as you just saw with that video to give subtlety to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion ah that's the key word discretion what you just witnessed that that was not an example of discretion to be discreet the ability to be discreet okay and again, that guy is lucky that the other dude didn't go in gorilla mode. My, he might have got hurt. Okay? The other guy who called himself teacher. That was, that was straight up and down an example of how not to be in this, in this faith. Okay? You young, you young brothers, man, you, you got to come up on a, a much higher level than that. Okay? So, let's get back to the video. Bring it out! I don't know. Give me something. I want to give all the praises and the honor. The hell though, give me something. To Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash. And was that Jake? That Jake here in the red? Was he simple and emotional? Of course he was. All the more reason you, you, you know, you should have, uh, you should have read in the spirit and say, I have nothing to say to that guy. First of all, he's with his woman. You already know Jake is going to act up in front of his woman. Okay? You're not going to make him look small in front of his woman. <laughs> All right? <laughs> uh, you do, you got a lot to learn, man. And double honor 
honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone honors as well to you brethren you fellow believers of this faith and shalom to the hopeful elect peace so anyway this before I get started I want to go to a comment that was left that instantly inspired me to do this video it says here we can believe it. Why is always GMS come up, man? <laughs> so that dude ain't said because we're the most hated camp. GMS, Great Millstone. Ain't nothing wrong. Y'all better chill on the disrespect. This group ain't legit. They like GMS. He can say how you I see because how you Well whoever left that comment, he's a jackass because first of all we we teach that you're gonna have so called you're gonna have Israelites looking like so called white people. So we wouldn't have made that novice mistake. Now, maybe 10, 15 years ago, we would have made that mistake and said something like that. But again, as the scripture has said, grow in grace. Let's get that. So whoever left that comment, they ain't too bright. All right, GMS, we're on a whole nother level, man. I'm not saying that proudly. All right, I'm saying it in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai. We're, we're on a whole nother level, man. Okay, beginning with all the past town down. Grow in grace, let's get that. Grow in grace. That's one of the reasons why we're so hated. As it is written, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. GMS, we're known not to be the go-along to get along gang. All these other groups, they're pretty much the go-along to get along, get along gang. They don't rebuke these other groups. Okay, but the scripture tells you that we're set up to reprove and rebuke. That's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Reprove and rebuke. That's what we're set up to do. It's not the most popular job out there. It's not the most nicest job out there. But it is the most important job out there to reprove and rebuke. If you see someone going off, you're supposed to reprove and rebuke regardless of what. Okay, I'm not, when I say someone going off, meaning within the ministry. If you have a group teaching wayward doctrines, yeah, they're supposed to be called out. The Apostle Paul called out men that were teaching wayward doctrines. Case in point, Alexander, Hymenaeus, Philetus, he even named names. But these other groups, they call us camp, they call, they call us and they call that, uh, they call that, that form of uh, rebuking and reproving, they call that uh, camp banging because they have no understanding. They don't understand this thing of ours. They do not understand this thing of ours, man. That's their problem. They lack understanding. Okay? Here it is right here. Second Peter 3 and 18. It says, but grow in grace. So you're supposed to grow in this thing of ours. Remember, like I said, and Yahweh Shai said it, uh, uh, living water keeps flowing and you got to flow with it living water is not stagnant this knowledge this truth is like living water and it keeps flowing okay it says but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord Yah and savior yahweh shai see and we constantly growing every day i can honestly say to you you young brothers that we are growing every day in this ministry we're learning mostly of ourselves we're learning our strengths and weaknesses and we, 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 another thing too in this knowledge is truth, you're supposed to test your integrity. King David said that, try my integrity. That's Psalm the 26th chapter. I always tell you young brothers, the, the most, uh, the person that's against you the most is yourself. You're, you are your own worst enemy in this truth. This flesh that we're in, that's our greatest enemy. Our flesh that we're trapped in, that our spirit is trapped in. It constantly wants to make us go off. That's why you have to learn to fight the flesh through the spirit. Walk ye in the spirit. See? So it says, 2 Peter 3 and 18, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen, which means so let it be. Amen in the Hebrew. Okay? So let's get back to the video. They like GMS. He can say IUIC because IUIC does that. Telling men to get away from their 
white wives and IHPK. Why does GMS come up when it comes to that? Yeah, because uh, first of all, we, we, we don't look at the color or the outward appearance. We teach that you're going to have Israelites looking like a so-called white person or whatever nation they were scattered. So it would, be, it would have been incredibly stupid for us to make a statement like what the guy in the white made, the statement he made, you got to get away from that white woman. <laughs> Say what? And furthermore, the so-called black woman, she's not a fucking prize any goddamn way. All right? The way he said that is like the so-called black woman is, she's just totally in love with you, you so-called black men. She can't wait for you to rush into her arms. Come on, man. We know there's the exact opposite. Now, there's a few of them that are decent, a few. But the majority of them, come on, man. So it's obvious the guy in the white, he's not, uh, he has a lot to learn, to say the least. Right? And of course I left a response. This is ridiculous, man. So anyway, this video is by a group called the Children of the Prophets. <laughs> right? Children of the Prophets. And what they're, what they're doing is number one, is not what Romans 8.16 says, right, with the spirit. They're immediately causing drama, but they can cause themselves harm that way. Now... Yeah, unnecessary drama. Okay, inflammatory words, personal attacks. You don't do that, man. You try to stay away from that. That's of the flesh. You're not moving in the spirit. You're moving in the flesh. You know, remember Proverbs 15 and 1. Even in a volatile situation, Proverbs 15 and 1. You have to remain clear-headed, right? And this takes time. You can't get that overnight. That takes time, all right? As they say in the world, you have to maintain frame, okay? Like Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is an ex a, a perfect example how he maintained frame, you know, when he was taken to the judgment hall after he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and how they brought him to the judgment hall and all the despicable things that they did to him. Yahweh I totally maintained frame, man. That's how we're supposed to be. In the face of adversity, right? We're supposed to maintain frame, okay? And that's, that, that is truly a technique, man. And not everyone possesses that. That's truly a gift. Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. There you go. What I will say for the guy in the white, towards the end, he 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 he, he dummied up, you know, like how Archie Bunker would say, in the, <laughs> you know, all in the family, dummy up, eh? He would say dummy up. Towards the end, homeboy in the white, he started dummying up because he saw it got critical. So that much I'll give him. You know, he didn't start lipping back to the other guy because you, you best believe a, a fight would have broke out. So that I'll give him, the guy in the white, okay? But that was totally unnecessary. Next time he'll, he'll know better. We understand we trust in the Lord, but this is why we're doing these videos. Speaking of discernment, as it is written, a man may be known by his look. You should have took one look at this guy in the red and no, I, no, I got nothing to say to that guy. And read the whole spirit. The guy sitting in his car, probably taking his woman out on the town. So he wants to look his best. <laughs> Last thing he needs is some dude trying to take him down. On his, especially on his choice of woman. How do you know that he, he he's fed up with the so-called black woman, so he decided to check into the so-called white woman, which many of our brothers, that, that be the case. All right, many of these jakes out here, that be the case, man. They're so tired of the so-called black woman, they go to the so-called white woman. Okay? And again, how do you know, unless you have an Edomite reader, you have a computer back there that says, that you point it to the person and says, Edomite. How do you know that the so-called white woman was, was an Edomite? You don't know. You don't have the facts. You don't have all the facts. But you're making a personal judgment. Come on, man. <laughs> so, 
you brothers, some of you young brothers that might be new, that's going to pop up and start doing videos, you might have to, uh, not videos, go out in the street and teach. You might have to consider what you're out there for and have examples set up with, with elders. This is why we have apostles, elders, bishops, elders. This, this is why our order is set. Good point. Good point. And we, being the apostles, elders, we really got to watch ourselves. Because if there's one thing Jake is looking for in us is weakness. Better believe it. 24 motherfucking 7. The, the, your underlings, they're always looking for weakness in you. They're looking for weakness in Apostle Tar. They're looking for weakness in myself, Apostle Elder Ramla, Apostle Rakar. That's why we have to keep, like the Apostle Paul said, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. At least I myself become a castaway. The Apostle Paul said that. Because Jake, our people, is always looking for weakness. So we got to maintain frame. Remember I talked about maintain frame? We got to maintain frame 24 fucking 7. That's the condition. See, everybody wants to be the leader, right? Everybody wants to be in the top seat. That's what it takes to be in the top seat. That's what it takes to be a leader. You have to bridle yourself. It begins with bridling yourself, bridling your tongue and bridling yourself. And that is not always easy. Sometimes that can be the hardest thing that you can do. But that's what it takes to be a leader. See, nobody thinks about that. They just see the glamour of being a leader. Everyone fawns to you. Everyone's following you. But they don't see the hard work that it takes to be a leader. Mostly on yourself. Working on yourself. Nobody sees that. Okay? So, yeah. You better take that into consideration. I'm speaking to younger men. There it is right here. The book of 1 Peter 5 and 3. Neither as being lords over the Most High's heritage, because at the end of the day, it's the Heavenly Father's heritage anyway. That's why we don't conduct ourselves as lords and tyrants. You know, brothers who are under our rulership, they know that to be true. To a certain degree, brothers have freedom, man. As long as they don't abuse their freedom. If they start abusing their freedom, then, then now it's a problem. Okay? There's a certain code, conduct. There's a certain decorum. There's a certain um, path that they have to follow, that we're following. Okay? First Peter 5 and 3. Neither as being lords over the Heavenly Father's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. See? Very important. So it starts with us. We got to be an example. If we talk the talk, we got to walk the walk. If we talk the talk, we got to walk the walk, okay? Especially that we're leaders over, over, you know, heads, if you will. We got to be in samples to the flock. This is, this is why our order is set up. Exactly. Right? To show you how to do the Lord's work. And some of these young men, they, don't, they, they think that this is like instant coffee. There's no fucking shortcuts, man. You got to come through the school of hard knocks. You got to pay your dues, man. Elder Pastor, almost 40 years he's been in this thing. You think he hasn't paid his dues and is still paying his dues? Almost 35 years for me. Elder Pastor Ron Laboy, almost 30 years. A little more than that. Elder Pastor Ricard, almost 35 years. He came in the same year I came in. And then you have the bishops of Connecticut. They've paid their dues and paying their dues. That's the beauty of being in this thing all these years. You pick up experience and you can't beat experience. You can't beat experience. Someone can talk all the shit they want to, but at the end of the day, you cannot beat or replace experience. And the very word experience, it was El Apostle Aram Lab, I heard, brought out the definition of the word. The word literally means from the Latin to try out. And we, you better believe, over the years, we've been tried out. Oh, yes. We have been tried out and are still being tried out. Okay? So, that's the beauty of having men of experience lead you. So, you young brothers, if, if you're smart, you would listen, watch, and learn, and keep your mouth shut. 
and your ears open so you can learn. Now, this is complete madness. Now, this, again, there's a time and a season. We understand maybe 15 years ago, you could kind of get away with that. But this video was like two weeks ago. This is 2023. You heard this Jake, he's ready to die for his wife who will probably move on yeah, because he's a simple-minded Jake with, with, who's totally emotional. He doesn't know any better. Look, Hosea 4 and 6 for that guy. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But on the other hand, the guy in the white, that's not, look. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yahushai said to Peter, I will make you fishers of men. That's not how you tease the fish to jump on your hook. You got to be, you got to use tact. You got to, when you go fishing, right? Imagine if you go fishing and you got your fishing rod and you're making all kind of noise in the water. You ain't going to get the fish. You got to gently put your, your, you know, your rod in the, in the water, you know, and you got to wait patiently for the fish to jump on the hook. And when you feel, even when you feel that the fish is bit on the hook, you don't just yank it up. Some of you guys don't know how to fish. You slowly yank it up. You give it a little tug, then you slowly yank it up. I've actually gone fishing, okay? And I actually caught a fish, okay? I went with my uncle. This was years ago in Milwaukee. Went to some lake. I forgot the name of it. And I actually caught a fish. And I was real excited when I did it, you know? And he was, he was instructing me. He said, yep, you tug on it. And then when you, when you know you have the fish, that's when you reel it in. Reel that sucker in. And it was a good-sized fish, at least a three-pounder that I caught, if I remember correctly. It was a good-sized fish that I caught. So, Yahushai said to Peter, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's what we're learning to do, or to become fishers of men. What kind of men? The elect. So there's a certain way you have to fish. You don't go to the, the watering hole and make all kind of noise and expect the fish to, to jump on your hook. It don't work. You have to be quiet. You got to be... You got to use tact. You got to be, you, you have to be uh, precisive. You have to use precision. These are all techniques you learn when you come into this thing of ours. It's, it's a lot more than just putting on a garment and calling the so-called white man the devil, okay? <laughs> Grow in grace and knowledge of who? Yahweh Barashim Yahushai, as it is written. If he kills all these guys, because it's not about his wife, it's about his own pride. And his wife, because that's his possession. So he's right. He, you were personally the guy in white was personally attacking the pride of that so-called black man. He, you know, he pride himself in having that so-called white woman. You know, he, Jake, man, Jake is just so simple. They'll have a so-called white woman, something that the white man don't even want, something the cat vomited up. But they'll pride her around like as if she's, as if she's a ten. I've seen it so many times. Jake is just on a very low level. Jake is like on the level of a beast. And that's what that, the guy in white, that's what he was dealing with, a beast. But there's a certain way you have to approach. First of all, he shouldn't approach the guy at all. He should have let him keep driving down the road in his car. Okay, but as you, as you saw in the beginning of the video, he's out there hollering at everybody. He's trying to get everybody's attention. This thing of ours is not about that, man. You're not out there to get everybody's attention. What are you, an attention whore? <laughs> oh, man. I'm thinking clearly. So that's you just the, don't... That's why the Jake said, hey, if you're looking for one, you, you, you got the right one in me. Remember the Jake said that to him? We're not out there to be attention whores, man. Okay? The word itself gets enough attention. Okay? We're out there to just teach the word. Now, if somebody comes up to you and engages in a dialogue, you, you reciprocate. And if the dialogue gets to a point where you see it's going to, uh, um, you know, turn into a, a volatile situation, that's where you use soft words. Again, Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer turning for a wrath. I, I don't think I read it. Let's go back to it. It is right here. Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer turning for a wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. There you go. And what that guy in the white said to homeboy in the red was grievous. Hey, hey, don't you know the white woman's the enemy? 
You kill your brother for the white woman? <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, some of you jakes are crazy, man. So you just don't scream at guys in cars, right, with their, with their wives and tell them to get away from their, their white wives. Man, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and the reason why I say that, right, you got to call out to the men. Who knows the way between a man and his maid? Ain't how you do it, man. You honestly, and the guy told you it was 21 years he was with that woman. You honestly think he's going to drop her at the drop of a hat? You know how much time and money and whatever he has sacrificed to be with that chick? See? <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. You jakes are crazy, man. Especially you guys that claim you're in the truth. I'm, I'm starting to really believe some of you are the craziest. Oh, ye men I call. And then once he gains the truth, then he understands. And how do you know this white this white woman, how do you know she was an Edomite? First of all, not everyone is, is meat for the truth. What did John the Baptist say when he saw all them Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism? Did he have the attitude of accepting all of them? Oh, yeah, come on, you guys. I'll teach all of you the truth. No, he said. He took one look at him. See, he was a man of great discernment. That's a gift. You got certain Israelites out there that can actually look at somebody and discern them, get a computer readout on that person and know if they should proceed or leave that person alone. It's called discernment, people. As a matter of fact, let's look up that word, discernment. Hey, you young brothers, you're going to learn today. And I'm really making this video for you. All what I'm discussing, all the heads, they already know this stuff. They've learned it along the way. Discernment. Discernment. The ability to judge well. See? That is the very definition of discernment. And, and that's a spiritual gift. The Apostle Paul spoke about spiritual gifts in this thing of ours. One of them is discernment. You got brothers that, like Elder Pastor, he has a... He has a great gift of almost supernatural. I'm not trying to put the man on a pedestal, but I'm telling you what I've seen over the years. I've been with him long enough to see. He has almost, almost supernatural power to discern. But he didn't give himself that gift. Yahweh Bashim Yashai gave him that gift. And it's just the truth. Those who have dealt with the man, they know. And I, I dare say, and certain, I have my moments. <laughs> I'll say that much. A gift of discernment, man. Not every brother has it, okay? The ability to judge well, okay? Discernment, man, very important. The scriptures speak about it. The Apostle Paul spoke about it. gifts of discernment. Is I read the scripture? Let's get back to the video. How do you know she was an Edomite? Exactly. You don't. This is... Yeah, he just zeroed in on the way she looked. That was a big mistake. A major faux pas. That's another word for mistake. You don't look on the outward appearance. Next time you young Jakes go to do that, think of 1 Samuel 16 and 7. The Heavenly Father looketh from the heart. You got to get into that person. Gone are those days when immediately you saw a so-called white person. You're the devil. Them days are gone, man. This truth has gotten more sophisticated than that. Remember, this is living water. Living water keeps flowing and you got to flow with it. You got to keep up with it. Okay? <laughs> you don't teach how we taught 10 years ago, 20 years ago. This thing is, of ours is constantly growing, man. Again, this is where we have this problem with this biased colored skin. Uh, manipulation, man. You got to rise above that. You got to rise above that color skin. Okay? We're not carnal men. We are spiritual men. This thing of ours is spiritual. And you're going to have an Israelite looking like... That's why a lot of you Israelites are going to be offended. When the, when the floodgates of this thing really, 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 really blows wide open, as we get closer to the very end, you're going to have a lot of Israelites coming from the different countries, different nationalities where they were scattered. And a lot of you Israelites that have been in this thing for many years and you think it's a, a, this is a black power thing, a lot of you are going to be offended, man. 
when you see the hordes and hordes of Israelites that look like the other nations coming into this thing, calling upon Yahweh Bar Shem A lot of you Israelites with your black only mentality, a lot of you are going to be offended. And that's going to be the linchpin. That's going to be the trigger to kick you out of the truth. Because at the end of the day, you weren't part of the elect anyway. And you never developed a spiritual mind. You still have that stupid carnal mind. You still have that, you're still clinging on to that old man. I'm talking about you old heads, man. Okay, I'm talking about you old heads that's been in this thing for many years. In and out. Lukewarm, pretty much. That's going to be the one thing to do it for you. Kick you out of the truth when you see, uh, let's say, a so-called Chinese come in this thing. And he has the spirit. Like, case in point, Zabak. Zabak was offended when um, that Korean, Korean brother came up. And the brother had the spirit. He said, look, he even said, look, I teach my children the stuff that you teach it. And he was ready and willing to learn. And here goes Zabak. Uh, should we let him into this thing of ours? I'm like, well, first of all, you don't, you, hold up, hold up, son. You don't bring nothing, in, nobody into this thing of ours. Yahweh Bar Shem is, I'm a little excited. Yahweh Bar Shem is the one, or are the ones that bring individuals into this thing of ours and kicks individuals out. Not you. You're not the gatekeeper. Okay? Zabak. Okay? And I'm drawing off that experience with the video. Those of you who saw the video with that Korean brother, that brother was a Jake. Okay? So that's what I mean. You're going to have Israelites from the different nationalities where they were scattered. They're going to come into this thing and certain guys are going to be offended. That's why in Matthew 11 and 6 it says, Blessed is he who is not offended in me. Not us. Begin to fell the past down down. We're not going to be offended. We're going to say, oh, well, that, that's, 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 hey, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. That is the glorification of the Lord. Look at all these Israelites he's bringing into this thing. And man, look, some of them look like straight up Hamites. Some of them look like straight up uh, so called Jews. But they're calling upon Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and they believe in this knowledge, this truth. They got the Holy Spirit like we got the Holy Spirit. Okay? Got a lot to learn in this thing, man, I'm telling you. You, know. you got a lot to learn and little time to learn it. Let's get a couple scriptures. Matthew 10 and 16. Like like Karadzad just said, Elder Karadzad just said, how do you know? You don't know. What, you got an Edomite meter in the back of your camp? And you point the meter on someone and it says, Edomite, Edomite. <laughs> they like the voice from, uh, uh, what was that, uh, Doctor Who, when you had the robots called the Daleks. Exterminate, annihilate, exterminate. What does your computer say? Edomite, Edomite. Those of you who watched, who were familiar with Doctor Who, the old one, the one made back in the 70s, you'd get the joke. If not, oh well. I took a shot. But there you go, man. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. There you go. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You got to get smart, man. You got to get wise. You jakes, you got to come up on a whole nother level, man. You got to get smart, man. You got to learn the nature of Jake, know the nature of Jake, and play on the nature of Jake. You got to be like that serpent charmer. Jake is a serpent. Look, the scriptures say we dwell among who? Scorpions. That's in the book of Ezekiel. It says, thou, this is directed to us. To remind us that thou dost dwell among scorpions. That's our people. They're scorpions. They're vipers. They're snakes. And we got to be the snake charmer. They're snakes and we got to be the snake charmer. Okay? And that's a talent, man. <laughs> that's a talent, I'm telling you. This man say, hey, you got a nice car, man. Probably say thanks. And then you're going to yell out why he's in a... The car with his wife, you got to get away from that white woman. Man, is you crazy? <laughs> is you crazy? A lot of these guys are crazy, bro. Especially the younger generation. They they talk before they think. You know, see, we're, we're from an older generation. The young generation, boy, you just got to shake your head at them. Honestly. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. It's way past an hour. 
I hope uh, you were edified. If you was, as usual, drop a line in the comment section. Let me know what's up. Let me know you were edified by this video. You were exhorted, especially you young men. I really did this video for you young men that are in the, in the faith, that are sincere. You saw an example of how not to be, how not to teach. So hopefully that resonated with you. Hopefully, and I'd like to uh, say shalom to Elder Karadza for the spirit working on him to point that out. You know, give that example via that video. Shalom to you, brother. And as usual, on to the next one.